hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's unlike my death rate. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Mr. Wara. Mr. Wara. How are you today, sir? Doing quite well. Thank you for asking. How are you guys doing, though? That's what I want to know, you people out there. You wonderful fish graders. You're doing such a great job. Notice I refer to you as fifth graders, because I'm assuming you're in fifth grade since this is fifth grade stuff. <laughs> Anyway, oh my goodness, what do we have going on here today? Looks like an awesome lesson because I see those two of some of my most favorite words in math, problem solving. Yeah, because that's really what math is all about. And it looks like we have lesson 6.10. I mean, we're, in, we're at the edge here, my friends, of this chapter. Let's go ahead and take up the topic. It does say problem solving, but it says we're going to be practicing our addition and subtraction. Now, our essential question, this is our guiding purpose in a sense our learning target it says how can the strategy work backward help you solve a problem with fractions that involves addition and subtraction there it is again work backward you know this is a strategy that i know that we've used one time before in one of these chapters although with my old age i don't seem to remember what year it was I, no just kidding anyway just having some fun but you know what we can't really move forward unless that's right Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Yeah, it says here the Diaz family is cross-country skiing the big tree trails, which have a total length of four miles. Yesterday, they skied the 7-tenth mile oak trail. And today, they skied the 3 fifth mile pine trail. If they plan to ski all of the big tree trails... How many more miles do they have left to ski? Ooh, good problem. Yes, I like it. It does say that we can use the graphic organizer to help you solve the problem. Cool, but I want to see the Diaz family. Quit, cameraman. There they are. Oh, my goodness, the whole family there. Yep, looks like looks like the crew. Cross country, so that's just going straight across. Unlike, you know, downhill skiing. Of course, which I love some downhill skiing. A lot of snow where I'm from. Very cool. But cross country is a really good exercise. I like that. And they're all out there having a ball. That makes me want to go out there too. Come on, let's just stop the video. Let's go ski. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. I don't know about you sometimes, Mr. Wara. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our graphic organizer. We have read the problem. I like that. I do. Because it breaks it down for us to really think about what's in the problem. Breaking it apart. Love it. Decompose. What do I need to find? Well, I need to find the distance, right? Because that's what the question actually asks us. It says, right, how many more miles do they have left to ski? So let's go ahead and put that down. Okay, next is what information do I need to use? Well, it says I need to use the distance, right, that they already skied. Because we're trying to find kind of that total distance. If they're going to ski the length of four miles and they've done some of it so far, we need to know what that part is that they've already done. Perfect. And of course, the total distance they plan to ski. So that's the information that we're going to use. How will I use the information? Well, we talked about that whole backward. I can work backward by starting with the, yeah, we're gonna start with the total distance. That's how I would do it. That's our four miles. And I'm gonna have to subtract at some point here, each distance they have already skied to find, to find out how much they have left. Is this like easy peasy lemon squeezy? Yeah, I think so. Now we have solved the problem. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. See, by working backward and using the same numbers, one operation undoes the other. And that's important to know. So just thinking out loud, I need to do this for myself to help me understand what I'm doing. I know I need to subtract. Why am I needing to subtract to find the unknown distance here? I need to think this out. So if I use subtraction, because I know that addition, like this working backwards, yeah, it's like that inverse operation. It just said that. If I subtract all the known distances that I have from the total, then I should be able to get whatever that unknown distance is, which is how many more miles they have left. Okay, I need to just say that out loud. Thank you for listening. <laughs> okay, write an equation, it says. It says miles skied yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna have to go up and get that number. Dun, dun, dun. Looks like seven tenths to me. Woo! Come on down. So seven tenths. Cool. And this is plus mile skied today. Mm, I should look when I was up there. Dun dun dun. Ah, I see. They skied three fifth mile pine trail. 
dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we have three fifths plus, my goodness, plus M. Oh, that's the miles I need to ski is equal to the total distance, which is four. Cameraman, thank you. Then work backward to find M. Okay, I see. So I'm going to take my four because this is how we're going to be reversing it now here. Okay, we wrote it. We wrote an addition equation or an addition sentence, as they like to say. Now we're just doing the reverse. We're going to take that four minus. We need a minus of seven tenths right? because that's something they already skied. Today they already skied and that was three fifths. By subtracting those two from the four is going to get us our M, which is miles they need to ski. And now we need to figure out what that is. Well, let me see here. That we could, since we were kind of shooting here to find a common denominator, I think 10 would work really well because 10 is a multiple of five. And it would be the least common denominator too. But to make it even easier is to take the four and then simply say, hey, I'm gonna make the four like 10 tenths would be one whole. So 40 tenths is now I've written it as a fraction of the same denominator. 40 divided by 10 is 4. Now I have minus 7 tenths. And then, of course, to get this to be tenths, I need to multiply 3 fifths, okay, by 2 over 2. I hope you're following that. That's just going to give us another tenth here so we can have that denominator change. And, of course, that means the numerator is going to be 6 because 3 times 2 is 6. Now I can go ahead and just subtract all that. Well, now I'm taking 13 because if I add these two together, because they're being subtracted right, from the 40 tenths. So I have 13. Well, what's the difference between 13 and, uh, I'm sorry, the difference between 40 and 13? Yeah, are you thinking like 27 maybe? So if I said that's 27 over 10, okay? Now it's not in simplest form, so I would probably want to do that. Maybe I want to say, well, I know there's at least two holes in there, right? 10 tenths and then another 10 tenths would give me 20. I'd have seven left over and then I would have tenths. Okay, yeah, I'm going to put in my answer to and 7 tenths. And again, I'm going to come over here where it says, so the family has 2 and 7 tenths miles left to ski. And I would say that's a good portion of it because we've been, you know what, it looks like our, our answer right here, mathematical practice one, is going to evaluate reasonableness. Well, I'm already starting to do that because it's what I would do in math because I have 2. See, and 7 tenths is almost another hole. So we almost have 3 miles here. And their plan was just to, yeah, ski four miles. So that's pretty close, considering like three days. If they're doing it over three days, assuming that they're doing yesterday or today, maybe they're going to do tomorrow. It just, it helps numbers mean something when we're solving a problem. Really important that we make that kind of an attachment. So how do I know it's reasonable? Basically, what I just kind of figured out. My answer has to be reasonable here. Number one is because we started off with four. So my answer is less than four. That's a good thing. And and taking in consideration that seven tenths is almost a whole and three fifths is just around the halfway mark, a little bit more than half, means that would at least push that up over one. So the answer would be a little bit more than one if I was just adding these two, seven tenths and three fifths. And so that means my answer should be around three miles doing that simple. And sure enough, it's two and seven tenths. And there you go. Again, there's different ways you can explain. There's not one right way. You know, and on that note, page master. All right, try another problem. You might even want to try this one on your own. Since we just did a problem, model it, you go ahead and try this completely on your own and then just use the video as a way of checking your work. Otherwise, if this is really a struggle and you're still thinking like you need more teaching, then by all means, stay tuned because there's more. Okay, it says as part of their study of Native American basket weaving, Leah's class is making wicker baskets. Leah starts with a strip of wicker 36 inches long. From the strip, she first cuts one piece, but does not know its length, and then cuts a piece that is six and a half inches long. The piece left is seven and three quarters inches long. What is the length of the first piece she cut from the strip? Problem is completely set up just like our last one. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of talk out probably all of these steps here and then kind of write them down all at once as the problem is right here in front of me. First thing, yeah, definitely. What do I need to find? Yeah, it's right there in the question. It's the length of the first piece that she cut that she didn't know how long it was. What information am I going to use? Well, the information I'm definitely going to need to use is I need to use how long the strip of wicker is. In this case, it was 36 inches. I'm going to also use the one piece that she cut that was six and a half inches long. 
That's going to be important in my problem. And then the piece is left. Because in my mind, I would actually write this up as an equation this way. I would actually say, in my mind, this is how I would read it. Six and a half inches. And I'm just going to put two little marks here. Let's know those are inches. Plus uh, the, the, the piece that was left over. That's three, I'm sorry, seven and three quarters inch. Plus a piece that I don't know how long it was is going to equal to 36. So when I'm thinking about writing a number sentence or an equation, that's what my mind sees by just looking at it. Now let's go ahead and fill in our information. Now that I know my numbers, this should be easy enough to do. Okay, what do I need to find? The length of the first piece cut. What information am I going to use? We talked about it. The, the length we're definitely going to use is the original length, which was 36 inches. The, the two lengths that we're giving, the one which was six and a half, and then we're also going to be using... I think it was seven and three quarters inch. How am I going to use the information again? Bring it on down. Okay, meet, meet, meet. Now we have solve the problem. Okay, and in this case here, like how I just did up above, I'm going to write an equation. An equation is the same as a number sentence. In this case, I'm actually going to use a variable. Now, a variable is something that's used in math to kind of describe something that's unknown. So when you sometimes you'll see like a letter. I try to stick away. Right now, it's okay to use X's, but sometimes people get confused with using an X as multiplication. So sometimes people will just use a letter that's different, like Y. So I'm going to put Y because this was that first cut we didn't have. She cut. She wasn't looking. Okay. She got distracted. No. And then she didn't have the measurement. One and a half inches, that was the next cut. Okay. And we know that all of this is going to equal our original length. So that's why I'm just going to keep adding all of these, seven and three quarters. All of this is going to equal that 36. Okay. And this is a standard equation. We have one unknown. And by looking at this equation, you can see how we could solve it because this is the whole idea of work backward. Now that the addition makes sense that we're adding all these together to get us back to our original length, then we should be able to do the inverse operation and begin subtracting, subtracting those two terms to get us to our unknown. That's what we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and switch it around. So I have 36 now minus 7 and 3 quarters and I'm also going to subtract 6 and a half and of course this is going to give me back to that's going to make it equal to y. See how I turned it around so now I have my unknown here so I can just focus on doing the operations here. Now we have a problem here because we don't have uh, common denominators so I can't subtract but what I could do is I could change my halves here into quarters that would make it a lot easier I'm gonna do this little strategy here since I'm gonna be subtracting whole number part and fraction part what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change this guy I'm gonna decompose him I'm gonna make him 35 and but with a four force next to him all right and I'm also going to use the associative property and just subtract my first term first. Let's not worry about the six and a half right now. Does that make sense? We have one, one hole added onto my 35 makes 36. And the reason why I want to do that is it'll make this subtraction here much easier. So now what's nice about this is I can do my 35 minus 7, which is 28. I subtract my 3 from the 4 is going to be 1 quarter. Now I'm just subtracting my 6. And let's just go ahead and change him now. One half is the same as two quarters. So let's just put him in a quarters now. Save us the time. And this is what happens with a lot of equations. We just keep on going down. This is how this kind of this is algebra, my friends. You can see we can't do the one minus two here. Look at that's a problem. We can't do the one minus two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what I just did the last time. I'm gonna just go ahead and put 27. I'm gonna decompose that, take one hole away from him. I'm gonna add my four fourths onto my one fourth. Well, one fourth, this isn't hard math, plus four fourths, right? Just want you to visually see that. Means that now I'm gonna put five fourths here. Hope you're with me. And then minus my six and two quarters equals y. Now this makes it much easier. 27 minus six is 21. Five minus two equals three. I carry my fours, just bring it over. That's all I do with that is equal to y. Therefore, the length of the first piece cut was 21 and 3 quarter inches. Wow, it was really long. You look at that, the numbers now. That's where I come into my reasonableness. Is my answer reasonable? Yeah, I started off with 36. That was the total length of that wicker. And 
wicker strip for the baskets they were making. And I took off about, looks like six and a half and seven three quarters. So if I rounded off just another hole, I have six plus six, 13, that's 14. So I would estimate that we have about 14 plus something equals 36 in my mind. Is that about 21? Yeah, that's pretty close. Yep, that's it. So my answer is reasonable. My friends, I know it, I hear it. Not only do I hear that wonderful music, I hear my producer, my little earpiece saying, Mr. Wara, you're over time. Time to get off the air. <laughs> hey, it's time to go, my friends. Like I always say, you know, these videos, they seem to go quickly. But you know what, my friends? Awesome. Learned a lot today. Take a chance to reflect. And now, live long and prosper.